Okay, notes 120, page 11. Please uh, pause this and copy this down. Okay, now we're talking about water in soil. So there's some uh, key words here. Capillarity, also called capillary action. This is when water moves upward on its own without being pumped or pushed. It's kind of opposite the force of gravity. Now, I have an example here, it's not great. Uh, my best example is when water moves upward in a paper towel. Put a paper towel in a container of water and the water will slowly creep upward. Now why is that? It's because the, the little fibers of the paper towel and I'll show you my pretty awesome drawing of the fibers of the paper towel. Here, the paper towel is made of, a, of thin fibers of uh, paper, and it, so that's what the black represents. And the white is kind of space in between. So if this is water here, and you put it in a glass of water, the water will move upward, because water has a, I wrote on the previous slide, water has a clinginess to it, okay? It, like, uh, it, it clings to itself, it clings to a container, in this case it's clinging to the paper. So the smaller the space here, it'll cling to the side, and it kind of like will meet here, and it'll continue climbing up basically, and it'll climb up a certain amount, and climb up pretty high in a paper towel. And it does that in, mainly what I'm getting at, it does that in the soil as well, in the ground. It will kind of move upward a bit above the actual water table itself. So. Um, what, and it's based on particle size. The larger particle size, if the particle size is large and the space between them is large, you will not, um, la large particle size, you have very little ca capillarity. It's the really small particles, or really like tightly wound paper towels, uh, tightly spun, they will have higher capillarity. Uh, and that's what you want in like a paper towel. Water's clinginess. Okay, this is an actual like uh, really close up um, picture of a paper towel. So this is the paper itself, and this is the empty space. If the water's here, it will kind of cling up here, it will kind of cling up a bit. Once it gets up a little bit, and then it goes up more and more, and then it kind of fills this whole area in, as I have here, and then it clings up to the next, and it will climb up that paper towel. the nature of water's clinginess. Some as you can see it, in this case here, you can float a paper clip on the surface of water because the water molecules kind of hold, I'm gonna call it like, they hold hands with each other, kind of. They kind of hold, hold hands. So it gives it like a, it's not really a film, but kind of acts like a film. And you can float a um, paper clip on water because of that. And sometimes you see that in nature. I know you see it sometimes. If this is my pretty sweet drawing of a glass, and you pour as much water as you can, it will actually go up over the top of it a bit. And it's because the water molecules really clinging here to the side of the glass and here, and then to other water molecules. Maybe you did this in middle school with like a, how many drops of water you could fit on the penny. And you'd be amazed at how many drops you could fit on. They make like a big kind of round bubble, and that's just that hand holding nature of the of the water molecules themselves. And it's that clingy nature that causes this capillary action. So I think that's a cool thing, and I uh, have some videos that I'll try to show you with that as well. Okay, please pause and copy this now. Okay, water retention. This is, let's go back, what I mean by that is this, let's say, do I have, yeah, let's say this. You have a tube with beads in it, think of it as like pebbles kind of, and you have a clamp here, it'll drain out into a beaker. If you pour water in it, if you pour water in it, it'll go through the beaker, like infiltration through the beaker, called permeability, how easily it goes through, go through and drain out. Now, if I pour 200 milliliters of water in there, Will all 200 milliliters of water drain out to the beaker? Think about it. Hopefully you're saying no. Not all of it will. Maybe 180 will come out, 170, something like that. Where will the rest of it be? It will be in there clinging to the sides of all this sediment or in the little spaces. Again, think about this water bottle. You dump it out. Not every single drop <clears throat> goes out. Some of it stays in there. Well, it's even more of that in this case. Now, so that's called water retention, water that is retained in the sediment. 
If you did the same thing here, this is a much bigger sediment and I poured, maybe I poured in 200 milliliters, maybe 195 would come out or 190 would come out. Because the sediment's larger, there's less surface area, the spaces are larger, it won't have as much surface to cling to. So there's less water retention in bigger, in bigger uh, sediment size. Okay, that's water retention. Permeable, and so the particle size, these small particle size, you have high water retention. Large particle size, you have lower water retention. Water gets trapped in the small pore spaces due to water surface tension and also clings to the surface, more surface area and smaller um, particles. Permeability is how easily water moves through soils or sediment. Um, if the soil doesn't let water move through, it's impermeable. So like this desktop here, it's impermeable. I spill water on that, it will sit there. It's not going to go through it. It's impermeable. You want that in a, desk, uh, a desktop or a counter or something like that. Um, if it goes through easily and fast, it is high permeability. If it goes through slow, it's low permeability. So things like, and the larger the sediment, the more permeability. Uh, large pebbles, water goes through fast. Silt, fine, fine sand, water will go through slower. We uh, layer, okay. We have a great lab on here, everyone's favorite lab, Lab 15, we will do. Um, and it is on permeability messy but everyone really likes it it is every year this is the best lab of the year so i'm gonna stop this episode right now